Good morning, church family. My name is Pastor Chris. I'm so glad. Look at all these beautiful faces here in Scotch Plains. Come on, would you give it up just for all the people around you? God is good. And welcome to where everyone is joining us live from, Evangel Woodbridge, our Evangel Deaf location, and our Evangel Online. Come on, would you just welcome? We are one church in multiple locations, and on any given week, we're just so thankful for what God's doing in our midst. Again, my name is Pastor Chris, and it's our honor that you're here with us today, especially if you're new to Evangel. Thank you for choosing to be with us. You've chosen a great day. As, um, as we've said before in this service, it's a great day to be together anytime we can gather. But today is Vision Sunday, and I'm really thankful because it's a time where we get to look back and we get to look ahead. Um, the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And what that means is that if we can't get a sense of what God is doing, ultimately, we're going to just trip all over ourselves. We're going to eventually fall to the left or to the right. So it's so important that we are people that have a clear sense of where the Lord is leading us. And I'm thankful as a church that God has birthed a vision in our hearts. Our vision here at Evangel, if you've been coming for any time, you'll know it. It's changed lives, changing communities across the street and around the world. That's why we come together. That's what gets us excited is to see people come into a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Jesus changes any, everything. Will somebody say amen? amen? He has the power to change our lives. And when that happens, what happened to us isn't meant to stay with us. I believe that the church has been placed in communities so that the community would be transformed. So that we would literally see what's happening in our streets, what's happening in the darkness of this world would begin to be illuminated by the power of what Jesus can do. Because here's what I know. When Jesus and his followers entered into a place, that place was never the same. Things began to happen. Lives began to be changed. Communities were different as a result of it. And so that's why we do what we do here around this part of New Jersey and all to the ends of the earth. And so Vision Sunday is a time for us to look back, to celebrate what the Lord has accomplished in the year that was, but for us also to look forward to the year that's coming and to really get a sense of expectation, anticipation, and clarity in our hearts around what the Lord has for us in 2024, individually and as a church community. So that's why the last 21 days were so important. We went through a season of fasting and prayer as we entered in to 2024 because before we can make our plans, we need to seek the Lord. Amen? Come on, before you decide what you want to do, it's important for you to come before God in prayer and say, Lord, speak into our midst. And so we have a tradition here at Evangel Church to kick off a new year. We want to just start the year with a dedicated season of seeking after the Lord. And I know for me and for our church and for our leadership, God has been doing amazing things this January as we've been seeking him. My prayer is that in your home and in your family, God has been meeting you as well during this season. Would somebody praise God if the Lord has met you this past month and has been with you? Come on. We're not praising God because we were hungry because it wasn't fun some of the days. We're praising because as we hungered for him, he said, they, you will be filled. And the Lord met us in a powerful way. Man, as we look back in 2023, two words, I'll say, with you, say them with me. Exceedingly, I almost got that word out there. We are exceedingly, abundantly. God has been doing things exceedingly and abundantly beyond what we can imagine. I want to just celebrate a few things with you that's happened in our community you know, we said we're all about changed lives, changing communities. We exist so that people can come into a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And I'm looking out today here in Scotch Plains, and I know you're in Woodbridge, and I know some of you are online, but there were people that came into a relationship with Jesus. They were lost. They were heading towards hell. They had, didn't have hope. In this past year, in 2023, they said yes to Jesus, and they gave their lives to him. 277 of you said yes to Jesus in 2023, and we give God all the glory. 277 people came into a relationship with Jesus. And after many made that decision to follow Jesus, 
The next step for a new believer in Jesus is to step into the waters of baptism. And I remember the, the years where we would have 60, 70, 80. And I remember thinking, well, one day we get over 100. And at the end of 2022, we had 105 people that were baptized. And now coming into 2023, we're like, Lord, what can you do? 150? Not 150. 162 people <laughs> stepped in the waters of baptism publicly declaring their faith in Jesus. And that's just such an exciting, exciting moment. So we celebrate with every person that's been baptized. And guess what? For those of you that haven't yet been baptized and you're a follower of Jesus, you don't have to wait too long. Come next Sunday. Say next Sunday. Here at Woodbridge, we are having Step In Sunday where we're going to celebrate water baptisms with people. And so come on, let's just give a round of applause for what God is going to do. We've been uh, growing as a church family, and we've had so many new people come through our doors. In 2023, over 1,300 new guests came into Evangel Church and joined us for services. Come on, we can celebrate that. That's exciting. And uh, a lot of people. Some of you are feeling it. You're like, hey, my row, my, where I'm sitting, my seat is a little fuller than it was before. We're excited for that. Amen. We're thankful for all of you that have joined us and for what God is doing in our midst. And we're seeing God do some amazing things in our next generation. How many of you know that um, our children and our youth, they are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. They are those we want to see experience all that God has for them. One of our values is that we live to leave a spiritual inheritance. We want to invest deeply in our next generation and in our future so that they have a faith that lasts, that's rooted in Jesus and um, normally when we, you know, look at our numbers and we kind of reflect on what the Lord has done, we can often look at, you know, on any given week, how many people are attending in a ministry. But we stepped back this past year and we said, how many total teenagers came through our doors and were a part of our youth uh, Friday nights or our youth activities? And the number was kind of breathtaking. And we celebrated with Pastor Josh and with the entire team there. Do you know that over 600 teenagers were a part of our evangel youth through the year of 20? 23. That's amazing. So a lot of new guests on Friday nights, a lot of people engaging in activities. And guess what? If you are between the ages of 12 and 18 and you have not yet been there on Friday night, what are you waiting for? God's got some good stuff in store. Join us then. We also have a class on Wednesday night that you could be a part of as well, but God is on the move and I hope you'll be a part of it there. When it comes to our children, how many of you are thankful for our children's ministry? All the incredible people serving. Pastor Melanie, our children's pastor. Uh, pastor uh, Carrie, our next-gen pastor, helping to give leadership to this area of ministry. God has been doing great things among our children. We step back and we look at, through 2023, how many kids were a part of our Evangel Kids ministry? 1,207 kids came through our doors, they're a part of EBS, they're a part of a Sunday or a Wednesday. We're believing that more and more children, more and more this next generation will experience Jesus in powerful ways. Amen? Amen? You know, I'm so thankful for technology and the fact that when we try to get our minds around who's a part of our evangel family, who have we reached in a, in a given year, we can actually look at our check-ins and we can look at our database and we can see the new guests that have come through the door. And in 2023... The number of people reached and ministered to through our reach as a church family, individuals, these are specific names, specific people, over 6,000 people were a part of one of our services, one of our events, gave, served, participated in some way. That's a lot of people. Come on, one more time. Let's <laughs> praise God for that. So it sounds like we got to make some more room for more changed lives. We grew by 30% this past year as a church family here and in Woodbridge. And man, we think God is just getting started. He wants to do more and more in the months in 2024 that's ahead of us. But the part that I'm most excited about is not just what happened in the house, but what happened through the house. Because we exist not for just what happens inside these walls. We're here for what God wants to do around the world. And so we're a church that lives on mission. We want to give ourselves to that mission. A key way we do it is through kingdom builders, through your generosity, through your giving, beyond our walls to reach into the streets, to reach around the world, to support our missionaries. Let me give you some numbers. That through kingdom builders and through your generosity this past year for our global missions projects, we were able to give 
over $256,000 towards Convoy of Hope, disaster relief, through um, meeting needs of, of villages around the world, feeding children, all these 256,000. That was what happened global in projects. Then when you look in local, our outreaches, things we did here stateside in our local communities around New Jersey, and even to help plant new churches, over 322,000 more was given to make that possible. Then we said we live to leave a spiritual inheritance, and that means we want to invest in our next generation and future kingdom leaders, scholarships, helping our kids go on a missions trip where they went, and some kids were filled with the Holy Spirit, had an encounter with Jesus, ministered in El Salvador. Through your giving, we are able to give $87,000 to pour into the next generation with future kingdom leaders, help some kids with scholarships. Man, God is good. And then we have our 160 missionaries that we are able to support through your giving and your faithfulness to tithe. We take 10% of everything that comes in these doors through our tithe, and we give it straight to missionaries. $374,000 went out to support missionaries all around the world to help them bring the gospel to every corner of the earth. And when you do the math, church, we hit a milestone as a church family. Through your giving here at Evangel Church in 2023, we gave more than $1 million across the street and around the world. Come on, somebody, give God the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Pastor, that's a lot of numbers. You're saying this, and that number, 6,000, a million. Every number has a name. Hear me. Every number has a, as something as simple as a dollar provided multiple meals for a child all around the world. And that child's heart was then open to hear the gospel. And guess what? One day, and I'm saying it, and you might think I'm crazy. One day, one of those children might be standing in this pulpit testifying, I was a kid you were feeding, and now here I am serving God, a pastor, whatever. You know why I know that? Because we already had that. Two years ago, we had a missionary come and speak to us, and we were helping support them in a child's feeding program in Calcutta, India, 40 years ago. Don't tell me God can't do it again. Every number has a name. Every name has a story. And we want to see Jesus as the author of that story. We want them to know him. Amen? God is good. Man, I just want to end the service now. God is good. But I, I want to share from God's word with you today. Because I really believe that as we've sought him in this new year, he has a word for us. He has something he wants to speak into our midst about 2024 and beyond. If you have your Bibles, would you open with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, it's found in the Old Testament. This is a passage of scripture that the Lord has burdened my heart with for the last several years. There'll be different moments. It always seems like it's at the beginning of a year that I'm meditating on some of these passages of scripture. That the Lord had something that he wanted to speak into my own heart about it. But this uh, season of prayer and fasting, this is one area of God's word. This is one story that I just couldn't get away from. I could feel um, a fire burning in my heart as I came to it. And um, when that happens, I, I just try to take time to really reflect. Sometimes I'll journal if you're not in the habit of journaling or writing out some of the things as you're sitting with the Lord in prayer. Um, but the Lord spoke into my heart, and I really believe it's a sense of what he wants to speak to us as a church family. What we're going to talk about this morning has implications for us as a church, but it has implications for you as a, as a man, as a woman, as a father, as a mother, as a husband, as a wife. It has very specific implication for our lives and it really something that I believe we need to understand as a church family as we enter into the year ahead and really weigh what's possible. As we turn here to 2 Kings chapter 4, we come to a story of a woman. She was a woman who was married. Her husband was a part of a group of prophets, people that were used by God in powerful ways in the Old Testament. It was in the company of a man named Elisha, who was a prophet who was, um, followed Elijah the prophet. And Elisha's ministry was marked by a double portion of anointing, of power, twice the miracles of Elijah, twice the anointing, amazing, amazing things God did through Elisha. And he also had all these other prophets that were around him that were also ministering to God's people, hearing from God. And then that man who was among us with Elisha, he died. And that left this woman as a widow. 
And it put her in a, such a desperate situation. I want us just to lean into it because sometimes it's at our point of greatest desperation that God moves most powerfully. And the Lord met her in such a powerful way. And I'm telling you that I believe if we could grab a hold of what God wants to say in this moment, I believe he's going to meet you in a powerful way. And us in a powerful way. Lord, speak to us today. Lord, I pray every heart will be open to just receive what you want to say. Lord, as clearly as you've spoken into my heart, speak it to your people. Make it plain, Lord God, but let it burn in our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's look here at these first seven verses of 2 Kings chapter 4. It says, verse 1, One day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead. And you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come, threatening to take my two sons as slaves. Elisha said, what can I do to help you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? Somebody say, in the house. She said, nothing at all, except this flask of oil. She replied. And Elisha said, Borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends, from your neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons, shut the door behind you, pour olive oil into all the jars. As each one is filled, put it on the side. She did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. And as soon as every container was filled to the brim, bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. She told the man of God what had happened, and he said to her, now sell the olive oil, pay your debts, and you and your sons will live on what's left over. Man, the power of God's word, the power of what he did, amen? Man, I want us to grasp this right now. You see, in that day, it, it, it's a remarkable miracle what just took place. Because there's a widow, and widows in that day and age in society, they did not have the same social standing, certainly not the same economic standing. She was very vulnerable in that moment. And in that moment of vulnerability, could you imagine? Some of you understand what it is to have creditors after you. You received the letters in the mail. You received the phone calls. You felt the pressure. You maybe felt even some kind of threat. Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. You felt the burden of that. Could you imagine that if you owed a debt, and instead, when you couldn't pay it, they didn't send you a letter. They didn't call you on the phone. They came and said, we're going to take your children. And your children are going to be enslaved until that debt is paid. They're ours. What kind of distress? Are you with me today? And especially after you said, we serve the Lord. My husband served so faithfully. Now my husband's gone and I have nothing and nobody. And God works such a miracle to say, you're never alone when you bring your desperation before him, before the Lord. And so what we need to realize is when she was asked what she had in the house, she, she did not say nothing except this 10,000-gallon jug of olive oil I have in my closet. She said nothing but a flask of olive oil. This would not be the kind that you're cooking with. This would not be a large amount. This would be a small amount of oil used for anointing. It would be kept probably in some kind of clay jar. I could show you a picture of maybe what that might have looked like. We're talking about a very small amount. She said, I don't got much at all in my house but this. And the Lord said, okay, so here's what you're going to do. Get your friends. Get your neighbors. Go wherever you can. Ask somebody if they have a jar. So I'll ask somebody today, do we got some jars? If anyone has a jar, can you just bring it to me real quick? I need a couple jars. Somebody, look at all these people. They're coming to church with jars. What's this all about? <laughs> thank you. Here, come on. Yeah, just, I, I'll take any of them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, this will do. This, okay. I, got, I don't know what we're going to do with all this. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I don't want to drop that. Thank you. All right. Good, good, good. All right, let's go. Let's go. This one's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good. 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 There's more. Come on. There's any more? Any more? Bring me another jar. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. I got the jars. I got some. We got more. All right. We got more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We got them. We got them. We got them. We got any more here? All right. Good. Good. Thank you. What? 
What am I going to do with that? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. There we are. So I got the jars. Can you imagine them gathering all these jars up and then they come? He's like, go shut the door. Okay. Shut the door. Now pour the oil. This oil into these jars. I can't even fill this jar with this oil. Are you with me today? That's it. In the natural. That's it. Are you with me today? This is what she was instructed to do. Without God, this is all that she has. And now she has a house full of jars. Aren't you thankful that's not what happened in this story? That as she began to pour from this vial, this was filled to the brim. And then she grabbed this one. This was filled to the brim. 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 This, 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 this. Even this. And she said, I just need one more. And they said, there is none more. And then it stopped flowing. How do you do that kind of math? It only happens by the power of God. It can only happen by the power of God. This was a creative miracle. And the amount of oil that was produced was enough to pay all the debts to free her children and give her enough money for her and her sons to live off, to be fed, to be clothed, and to be sustained. Because our God is a God who is more than enough, who sees us and meets us at our point of need. And so the transformation that took place in this lady's life was remarkable. But here's what I want you to know. The miracle was just not for the mother. It wasn't just for this widow. It was a community-wide miracle. That community was different because they remembered, I brought that woman, I gave her an empty jar, and there I see her over there in the street selling olive oil, making money. What is going on? What happened behind those closed doors? God met us. God opened heaven over my house. He heard me when I cried out, and he met me miraculously. He filled every jar. And I had just enough. I know for some of us, I'm excited about the miracle, but I I can't imagine. Maybe she wondered, what if I just had one more jar? What if there was just one more Couldn't imagine being a person because even the people that would have given the jars amazed. What about the ones that held back? But the ones, no, I got a bunch of little uh, little twigs or sticks and I'm holding on this jar and I I can't empty them out. It's not worth it. Anyone unwilling to give, how that might have felt. Everyone that gave was a part of the miracle. Everyone that opened their door, everyone that, that, that was in that community that heard that cry and said, here, here's what I have, the Lord met it. As I was working over this message, as I was preparing to share this with you and share this vision Sunday, I had a deep sense of what I felt the Lord was saying, things that I wanted to invite us into. But as I came into a prayer meeting and we began worshiping and I was getting ready to come up on the platform to pray into a certain pocket, I really felt the Spirit of the Lord speak to my heart. And it was like a, a word on, on repeat. And, it, you know, somebody said, well, you're the pastor. I'm sure that happens every day. I mean, I, I, have a, I have a sense from the Lord. I sense as I study his word, the Lord will stir in my heart. But words, like just straight up words, those, those are not as frequent as every day. And some of you might think, I don't walk on water, friends. I'm like you. But the Lord just kept speaking, and I could feel it. I had to go to one of our pastors and say, man, I, could just, I feel like I'm just hearing this all over, all over, because I think it's the word the Lord has for us as a church. I think it's what God wants to say to you and to me. And as I just sat on it, the more I think about it, the more I meditate on it, the more the Lord's confirming it and burning it into my heart, I know it to be true. This is the word the Lord's put on our heart as a church and what he wants to say to us today. Every vessel surrendered will be filled. 
hear that today. Every vessel surrendered will be filled. She came asking, and when they gave that empty vessel, every vessel that was surrendered to the Lord was filled. And the idea of oil in the Bible is the idea of anointing. It's a picture of the Holy Spirit being poured out, God's presence among his people. I'm telling you what God wants to say to us as a church is every vessel surrendered to him is going to be filled. And the adverse is true. Everything unsurrendered, unfilled. God wants to do something special. Seek the Lord while he can be found. I'm telling you, God is bringing us and has brought us into a season where he is doing something special in in our midst. And I'm telling you, you could have been a part of that community that this woman saw this miracle. You could have been in the community. You could have heard the stories. You could have said, wow. You could have said, it's amazing. But I'm telling you, something different happens when you're a part of the surrender. When you're a part of saying, no, 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 I touched that. I, I was there. That's my jar that was filled. I know God is real because he filled my jar. He filled me up. What I gave, he filled and poured out from heaven. Friends, I don't want us to be a church and a body filled with spectators. I want us to be filled with the presence of God. That won't come by just coming to church and sitting in a seat. It'll come through surrender. Through saying, Lord, everything I am, everything I have is yours. And when we give that to him, he meets us in power. I want to show you that this isn't just a story from the Old Testament. This is a reality in God's kingdom. Everything surrendered, every vessel surrendered will be filled. The Bible says that we hold this treasure in jars of clay, in earthen vessels. And on the outside, it may look like we're, 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 we're falling away. Some of us, we look a little better. Some of us, we look a little worse. But it doesn't matter what's going on, on the outside. It matters what's happening on the inside that we will be filled with power, that we are filled with the very presence and power of God meeting us, moving us, he desires. I want to show you this in the New Testament, Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. You see a story about Jesus' first disciples that were called to follow after him. The Bible says that on the day Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, there were great crowds that pressed on to him and listened to him. So there's a lot of people that came to want to hear a word from Jesus. They want to hear the word of God. Then Jesus noticed two empty, say empty, well, that's interesting, boats on the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Here's what we need to know is that these men had just been out on the, on the boats and they'd been out probably through the night into the early parts of the morning and their boats were empty. Do you know why? Because they didn't catch any fish that day. And their nets were being washed They weren't being sorted because they had no fish in those nets. So their boats were empty, their nets were empty, and I would have to say their their hearts were probably empty as well because everything they were trying to do to provide for their family wasn't happening that day. But here's what happens. Here's when everything starts to change. Verse 3, stepping into one of the boats, Jesus. When Jesus steps into the boat, it's the opportunity for something powerful to happen. When Jesus shows up, I'm telling you, Jesus gets in the boat. He asks Simon, who owned the boat, your boat. Is it your boat? It's my boat. Let's go out in the water. They went out in the water, and Jesus just wanted to sit in the boat, and he wanted to begin to teach the people so they could hear him. His voice could project and get to all the crowds because they were pressing him on the, on the shore. He sat in the boat. He taught the crowds from there. But when Jesus finished speaking, they had heard the word of God. But it wasn't enough for them just to hear it, especially not for Peter, for Simon that day. Jesus wanted him to experience the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. So we now turn to Peter. And I just believe that the Lord wants to turn to every one of us at some point in time, and he has a word for us. And here's what he said. Can you push out into the deeper and let's throw out our nets for a catch? Can you push out? Let's go deeper because there's something I want to show you. Here's what Simon said. Master, we've worked hard all night. We did not catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let my nets down again. 
He pushed out deeper and he said, I'm not, nothing's going to happen. Trust me, it's empty. Everything's empty. My nets are empty. It's not going to work. But because you said so, he surrendered to the word and the will of Jesus. And what happened? The nets were so full of fish, they began to tear apart. You see, that boat is a fishing vessel. That vessel was surrendered to Jesus and every vessel surrendered to him will be filled. And guess what? It was filled. The Bible says it was so full that when his partner saw, they had to get their vessel and come over and they brought their boat over and both were so full, they began to sink under the weight of all that flowed in. They were amazed. You see, what's powerful is the difference between what could have happened here. Jesus sitting in the boat, he was, they were near, they were with Jesus. They had heard the word. Jesus taught, we don't even know what he was teaching on. But he said, listen, we can have this and we can have a good time. And my friends, I'll tell you, we can have Sunday morning, we can have a great time. We can hear the word, we can come into his presence, we can leave and we can, we can experience God working in our midst. But I'm telling you, in 2024, Jesus said, can we push out into the deeper? Because I got a lot more out there waiting for you. And the question is, do we want to stay on the shore in the safety? Or are we willing to go out deeper with Jesus? Because here's what will happen. He will be revealed in a greater way in your life. What you know of him today, he wants you to know him more. See, they, people on the shore knew him as teacher. They were about to know him as provider. They were about to know him as the son of God. They were about to know him as a miracle worker. They were going to know him in greater measure. And so to begin 2024, we're going to push out into the deep, okay? Why? So we can know Jesus more. We can get a greater glimpse of him. Do you realize that you can be reading your Bible in the Old Testament and over 300 times all in the Old Testament, 100 years before Jesus was ever born, people already talking about him? People already saying things about him. There's someone that's going to come and he's going to be God with us. There's going to be a king like no other king that's going to be here. There's going to be someone the spirit of the Lord is going to anoint him and the sick are going to be healed and captives are going to be set free by him. There's all these pictures and they're all little fragments, all these little verses. But when you take all those things and you bring them together, they form a picture. You know what that's called when people do that in art? It's called a mosaic. And there is a mosaic that is formed by the 300 prophecies about Jesus that tell the story and paint the picture of who he is. And I want you to know that too. I want us as a church family to know Jesus more. And so therefore on the 18th of February, that Sunday, we're kicking off a brand new series here at Evangel called Mosaic, the Prophetic Pictures of Jesus. These are going to help us to see from all these different parts of the Bible how they all tell that one story. They all paint that one picture of who Jesus is. Come on, doesn't that sound exciting, church? It's going to be an amazing trip, a journey into it. Our team has been working hard on it. This is something we've been, we had worked on this years ago and been digging into God's word and we're excited that we could go into it. And not only do we have it on Sundays, but I want us to push out into the deep. Our time in God's word cannot just be Sundays, it's meant to be every day. So we've created a 40-day devotional with this series. 40 days where every day you could dig into the scriptures. You can read, you could take it in, you can meditate on it, you can even have questions to apply to your life. We're gonna have that in a printed version. We're gonna have that, uh, and you can buy that if you'd like. We're gonna have it in a digital version for free and an audio book. Thanks to our incredible team here. They're gonna be recording an audio book of it. So wherever you're able to access God's word, we want you to dig in. And just be studying this all throughout. If you'd like to pre-order a copy of the book, we'd love to get a count on how many would like it. It'd be $5, and we'd love to put a paper copy in your hand if you help us with the print costs of that. But uh, scan the QR code. You can register for that and to make sure that you have access to it. We'll have some available uh, two weeks from now, and we're excited for it. We also are going to have life groups that are going to be going through this, digging in every week. We want to immerse ourselves in the story of Jesus over the 40 days leading up to Easter that we would see him more clearly. Amen? Amen? Come on, are we ready to take that journey together as a church family? God wants to reveal himself. Here's what happens when you push out into the deep. When Simon saw what happened, he saw the, the nets, he saw the fish. He didn't say, thanks, this was amazing. What he said was he 
fell to his knees and he said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. He was awestruck by what he saw. You see, the first thing that happens when we encounter Jesus, we get a fresh revelation of him. We, we realize how we're sinful, how we're, we're not worthy. And it's only through that place of surrender that Jesus can really give us our greatest identity. It's through that we come into the kingdom of God. I'll invite the worship team to come up at this time. When we surrender, every vessel surrendered will be filled. I'll say it one more time. Every vessel surrendered will be filled. God wants to fill you afresh. Jesus doesn't want you wandering through this year or through another day without his presence. He said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. He said, everyone who hungers and thirsts for righteousness will be filled. His desire is for us not to go another day, no, another minute, without his presence filling us afresh. But it starts with surrender. It all starts with surrender. The vessel, you and I are vessels. That ship, that, that was a vessel. You know, the, the place where the, the believers met in the upper room, that was a space that was surrendered, that was given for a different purpose. Whatever we make room for in 2024, when our hearts are set on Christ, if we're making more room for him, he's gonna fill it with his presence, with his power, with a touch from heaven, and he wants to fill you afresh as well. Come on, would you stand to your feet with me today? Somebody's been feeling the burning in their heart as you've heard this word because you could feel that you've, your life has been empty. You feel like you've been wandering through, you've been going through the motions. Some of you know about Jesus, but you don't know him personally. You don't know him like that. You're not seeing him do things like we're talking about today. My friends, I, I was like that. I didn't know him like that. I knew about him. I knew the stories. I knew the, the little, you know, felt boards, flannel things that you put up on the wall. That's Jesus. You know, there's the little lamb he has on his shoulders. That's not the Jesus. I mean, that's, a, that's a picture. That's a cartoon of him. I'm talking about Jesus in real life, in the flesh, touching people's lives, meeting people, what we see in God's word, coming to life. My friends, I've seen people come to these altars be healed of epilepsy, be healed of cancer, be healed of diseases, be healed of things that they've been walking through. God working miraculously in people's hearts and people's lives, people walking into God's presence, addicted to drugs and all kinds of other things and leaving free because they experienced Jesus for themselves. They came empty or they came full of the wrong stuff and they left filled with his presence. But the same was true for every one of them. It all started at surrender. What do we need to surrender to the Lord today so that we can be filled? The Lord's inviting you to that place of surrender. He's inviting you to that place to say, God, I'm not gonna keep going at it on my own. I'm not gonna keep setting my own agenda, Lord. You are my agenda. You are what I want. You are the desire of my heart. And I'm telling you, the Lord is standing on the shore. He's got one foot in the boat of your life. And he's saying, will you let me take you somewhere and show you something? Can I have it? Can I have this? But will you surrender the vessel to me and let me work in you and through you like you can never, ever imagine? So we're going to start right now at this altar. All you have to do is surrender. That's what I know. That's what I know. All you have to do is open your heart to God and he's going to do the rest. And I'm believing that surrender is going to bring healing. I believe that God wants to pour out like oil from heaven, healing. Come on, I'm telling you, today if there are broken parts in your heart, in your life, in your body, in your relationships, whatever it might be, get into the presence of Jesus in a few moments. And then come back tonight at 6 p.m. It's called open heaven for a reason because the Lord is going to pour out tonight. We can already feel it in our hearts. The sick are going to be healed. People that are bound are going to be set free. Those that don't know Jesus are going to come to know him tonight. People are going to, people are going to profess their faith in Jesus tonight. Things are going to happen. Be here. 
lean in. But we don't have to wait for tonight. We can start right now in his presence. One moment in his presence can change everything. So as we go into this last song, we ask the Lord, show me your glory. That's what we're saying. Lord, fill me. Here I am. And I'm going to ask you, be bold. Do not worry about the person next to you or if you're sitting in the middle of a row or if you're in the balcony or you're somewhere somewhere else and you, it's going to be hard for me to get there. I'm inviting you. Take a step towards God. You know, Jesus said, will you push out in the deep a little bit, Peter? Let's catch some fish. He could have said, well, you're God. We could just catch some fish right here. That's not how it works. Obey him. If he's prompting your heart, step out of your comfort zone. Are you with me today? Pull yourself out there with God. That's part of the surrender. Surrender requires vulnerability. Be vulnerable with God today. Let's watch what he does. Amen. Lord, help us today. Help my brothers, help my sisters. Lord, I pray that if there's a fire burning in someone's heart, Lord God, even if there's some, some level of, I, I, can this be true, Lord? Could you really meet me? Could you really fill me? Could you really heal me, Lord God? I pray today in faith we would just come expecting that we would say, Lord, this vessel, my life, surrender to you, Lord, fill me. Fill me afresh. Lord, I pray today you'd meet your people as we respond in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you're feeling that in your heart to respond to God's word, leave your seats, come down to this altar and let's worship the Lord and let's lean in for just a few moments and experience, I believe, the promise of God being fulfilled in our midst. Come on, come forward right now.